Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Owner Ops Podcast. I'm your host, Austin Gray, and in this episode, I'm hosting Andy Walker again from Striker Digital. This week, I had a listener ask me, hey, I would love to use your website, guys, but I've already paid a deposit down with another designer. So what five to 15 bullet points do I need to give them as a checklist to make sure that they are creating me a website that will convert well? So if you're in a similar situation, listen to this episode with Andy. Andy's going to go over six sections of your website that you must have in order to convert leads at a high conversion rate. If you are looking to get a service business website built, don't hesitate to go use the link in the show notes to visit Striker Digital's website. Fair warning, I do get compensated for this because I recommend them, but I'm only recommending people who I have vetted, people who have gotten me results in my business Bear Claw land services. Andy and Bodie have literally got me to number one in the state from an SEO perspective. If you have not already signed up for the newsletter, go do that because we will be sending an emailed summary of these bullet points tomorrow. We send these out on Saturdays. These episodes drop every week on Fridays. I'm wearing the shirt today, so if any of you guys want a shirt, send me an email. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. Tell me how we can do better and recommend a guess. And then leave us a five-star review on Apple, Spotify, and I'll send you a free owner ops shirt. All right, how about that? Let's jump into the episode. All right, welcome back to another episode of the Owner House Podcast. I'm your host, Austin Gray. Got Andy Walker joining us again for the second time. Andy's joining us this time is because we've had some requests from people reaching out about marketing services and what do people need to do on their website? So Andy, welcome back to the show. Awesome, thanks. Can't keep me away. I'm, I'm gonna come on a third time too. I'm gonna be back again. So let's just use a real-time example here. Last week, for those of you who've been listening to the podcast, you guys know that uh, we're running some paid ads very similar to what we did for Bear Claw uh, with my partner, Josh Joseph. And we're doing that for other land clearing and excavation companies. A guy came to the sales funnel and he was asking about his website. I always point people to Bodie and Andy because they are crushing it for us on the SEO front. His main question was like, okay, I've already put a deposit down with a designer, got somebody else building my website. What are the five to 15 bullet points that I need to make sure that they do to create a good building block? So that leads us to this conversation. Yeah, so I think really you can break down a website into three parts. So when you're gonna build a website, you need to focus on three things, your SEO, conversion rate optimization. You wanna make sure like, you know, the whole point of doing SEO is to drive traffic to the website to become leads and customers. And if you're driving traffic to the website, and they're not becoming leads and customers, then you're not getting a return on your investment. You know, that's the entire function of any marketing campaign that you run. And then uh, user experience being the third one, but user experience and conversion optimization really play hand in hand together, um, in my opinion. So you, the way I think about this, uh, before we even dive into like really maybe more higher level topics is that something I think a, a lot about is, you know, if you're a consumer on the internet and you go to an e-commerce store, like online, you're gonna buy shirt, a shorts, a wallet, you know, whatever you're going to buy, you know, there's an ex, you have an expectation of an experience that you're going to have on that website of what it's going to look like, how you're going to navigate from category of men's to women's, you're going to filter by t-shirts and things like that, right? You know, when you go to Amazon, you expect to have a certain experience. So I really think when you're building websites, you need to understand, you know, the, your users on the other end, they're not sophisticated thinking about it in that nature, but subconsciously like that's going in the background of their mind. So when you, they land on a website and it's just not anything that they would expect, you know, maybe it's not a bad thing, but you know, like there's a similar structure and standard across like all types of websites for home service businesses. You know, they're not like, it's not the sexiest thing in the world. It's structure. You have your value proposition. You need to capture their contact information and things like that. So that's like the first thing I think about is, you know, you don't need to invest thousands and thousands of dollars into this really extravagant website. Um, and oftentimes when we see people do this and they come to work with us for SEO, we oftentimes just have to go in and change a lot anyways. <laughs> so something that's always disappointing for us is someone will come to us and they want to do SEO and they're like, oh, I'm having my website built. And I'm like, oh crap, great. You know, cause now when you come in, it's just a lot of additional work. I know we're just going to have to go in and make a lot of changes, you know, right off the start. Yeah. And why is that? I'm curious. I think web development and SEO are separate skills. I mean, if you're doing web design, you should have like a base understanding of what SEO is. But, you know, one of the challenging parts is, you know, balancing because you do need to find a balance between your brand and SEO, you know, just like a straight up SEO website 
would just be like, you know, your keywords, very bland, not really good engaging copy and things like that. I mean, you can, you can blend them together. Um, but the guys that are just web designers, they're really great at just creating the brand presence, the design and things like that. But they don't necessarily have the knowledge of, you know, we need to have each page internally linked in this nature. We need to have service cards that represent each service that go to every single page. We make sure all of those pages are also linked in the footer and the primary navigation. Um, and what I'm getting into when I'm talking about the internal linking. So it's just, if you're on a website and you want to see an additional service that somebody offers, we'll do a cleaning company, for example, right? You know, they have just a standard house cleaning and they have a deep cleaning and you want to learn more about like what entails in the deep cleaning. So you're going to click through to that page. You just want to have multiple places where people can find that page. One for the user experience, because they need to easily navigate it. If not, they're just going to bounce really quickly. But um, a big factor for SEO and having the internal linking between the pages is that what's going to happen is you take your website, you create a site map and your site map just shows like all the URLs, all the pages you have on your website and you submit that to Google search console. And when you submit that to Google search console, you're, you're effectively having them crawl the website to learn the website, learn about the content, understand the pages and then get them indexed. And the definition of indexed would be actually showing on the search engine because a lot of people have a lot of content built on their website, but it's not indexed. So it's not actually doing anything for you. Just kind of a hobby at that point. And the better internal linking structure that you have will allow when Google crawls that website to be able to navigate to each page. And if they can't navigate to each page, they can't crawl that page and understand it. I mean, you did, you did give them the URL on the sitemap, but like from personal experience, when you do have that proper internal linking structure, your pages are going to get indexed much faster. And you know, that's, really the goal because step one is just getting them to show on the search engine before you're ranking in the top three or anything. You just simply have to have them uh, live on the search engine. But that, that's one of the main factors. If you are a land clearing, excavation, grading, or snow removal contractor, check out landservicemarketers.com. LSM is the same growth agency I've used to grow Bear Claw land services from zero to over seven figures of revenue. We've created a seamless process for owner operators to upload photos and videos from the field and LSM will do all the heavy lifting for you on the back end. They'll do all the editing, all of the publishing, all the social media management, and they'll run your paid ads to bring you more leads so that you can close more high ticket jobs. Check out landservicemarketers.com. So I had a friend actually, he's starting a construction company and he reached out to me. He's like, Hey, who built your website? And I was like, well, I, I did initially. And then I hired an agency, like a pro to do it. Why shouldn't somebody build their own website if they don't have all this technical know-how and experience. Yeah, really, I think it's going to be just more expensive in the long run. And maybe that expense isn't felt tangibly, like you don't actually see money leaving your account, but it's like the opportunity cost doing it yourself. One, your time investment should probably be spent better by generating more business to allow you to produce more cash flow and then invest into professionals that can provide the service for you. If you've never done it before, you don't know what works. You just simply don't, don't know what works and what's going to convert somebody from a traffic to a lead. And just like we talked about with all of the internal linking strategies, and then what's going to happen is you're going to invest a lot of time to do it. It's going to be frustrating time. You would think it would be easier in 2024 than it is, but it still involves a lot of technical knowledge to actually do it. But it's that opportunity cost of you build a website and it's, it's up there. That's great and you might have some traffic coming to it. It's not SEO optimized by any means. You probably use a very lackluster page builder and you're just not gonna get the customers that you want. And so then, you know, you're gonna spend three months in that process doing all that just to then eventually you're gonna end up giving up and just pay somebody to do it. So it's just much simpler to just pay up front and do it. I mean, not even from a website perspective, but like I just take that same stance within our business. You know, if there's something that I need done, if I needed, for example, I was having a custom dashboard with some complex automations built for us. And it's like, I could probably do this and I probably could figure it out. Or I could just cut through all the crap and just have someone do it for me. And yeah, it stinks. I got to pay money, but it's going to be done right. And it's going to be perfect. You know, it's, it's going to last me for the duration and do everything. It's going to have all the correct functions to do everything I want. I can tell you from experience, like in my past businesses, that was one of my roles that I brought to the business was like, oh, I'm going to build and manage the website. And yes, I learned how to use WordPress, Webflow. I started, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say, but I started the very first one with Wix, right? And everybody always asks like, why, why wouldn't I just build my own website with Wix? And what you were saying about the indexing and the internal leaking structure and submitting the sitemap to Google, it's like, if you're a beginner in web design and you go build something on Wix, like one, you probably have never even heard of internal linking structure don't know what a sitemap is right and you don't even know that you need to index your site on google and 
this is why I have loved working with you guys so much because like you guys picked a, a service and you've gone headfirst into it. You know it in and out. I'm going to tell you guys, and this is why I'm such a big proponent of Andy and Bodie and, and fair disclaimer, like they pay me a, an affiliate fee. You know, if, if I refer somebody to them, I don't refer people just because I get paid. I refer people because we're building a brand here in public and I know Andy and Bodie are going to deliver results thousand percent. They're delivering results because they are experts in it. And so it's like, if I refer people to you guys, like that just helps build the owner ops brand because people are going to have a, like people who listen to this podcast are going to have a great experience. They're going to get leads on the SEO side which then in turn helps the owner up sprint. So that's why I enjoy working around you guys. The sitemap thing, like building your own website, you're so right about the opportunity cost. Sure, you can go spend two or three or four or five days, however long it takes you to like hack together a website on Wix or Webflow or WordPress, whatever. But if you don't know how to do the technical stuff, it's like having a useless website if it's not generating any leads, right? Yeah, in software, they call something similar to this tech debt. So basically if somebody wrote, if you were building a software and somebody wrote a really, a bunch of bad code and was undocumented, no one truly knew how it worked, then it's a massive time and money commitment to have somebody come in and optimize that and fix it. And so what we'll see a lot of times is somebody, they'll have a website or maybe someone built it a long time ago and it's an, on an older, just a tech stack that not a lot of like, modern day web developers use. And they're like, I need, or I really need to get off this. I can't use this. I can't deal with this. But the thing is, once your website is live and age for a period of time, you're generating traffic and ranking. When you go and build a new website, you're going to submit a new sitemap to the website. So we just saw this happen. So one of our clients, um, we do their SEO and we didn't receive any contact information about this. Their web developers were going to redesign their website and they just did it. And this was a website that was getting like, probably 500 to a thousand clicks every single month to fall off a cliff instantly. So this wasn't even a new website. They just redesigned the website, but changed all of the existing content on the website. So, um, all the primary keywords that we were targeting were all changed. And this isn't the first time I've seen this happen. Um, so like, this is just an instance of that tech debt because yes, naturally, like you are going to want to upgrade with modern times, you know, as like, if you build a website five years ago, there's a different user experience and type of feel from those websites five years ago versus the expectations of a user today. And naturally you are gonna to wanna to progress that forward, but there's a right way and wrong way to do it. And when you do it wrong the first time and you have to reset everything and do it right the first time, you're gonna run into that issue of, if you're getting a thousand clicks to your website every single month, it goes down to 200. Likely the outcome is that you're gonna get less leads and you're gonna get less customers because 800 less people per month are gonna be on your website. Uh, you know, and, and that's really the goal as an entirety. And another thing that I think when you're doing it yourself is, a lot of times like for keyword research you don't have to be super complex about it like if you do junk removal people are probably just searching for junk removal right like that's probably going to be your primary keyword but um, we just had an instance recently with um, somebody who does artificial turf installation and the initial website was um, optimized for that search term but within their area by like a 50 or 60 percent change difference people search artificial grass installation not turf they use the term grass. So everything was built around that instead of turf. And that's just like one simple mistake when you just don't know what you're doing and you're accidentally optimizing for the wrong thing when, you know, it could have just been done right the first time by a professional doing it just saved you all the time and opportunity cost alongside that. Yeah, it's pretty funny because like uh, when we started into the business, I thought I knew what I was going to go after, but then we did the research for the search volume on the SEO and it's like, oh, we need to optimize for land clearing. Like that's what people are actually searching for. So whenever you bring the SEO perspective, you can actually do the research that will help you craft your website, like you were just saying, and man, that could make or break it for that client, right? Yeah. And something that I, I, I think too, is like, as a business owner, you get used to the terminology that you use. So residential roofing or house repaint, where you just like repaint a home, but it's just like from two perspectives, one from an SEO perspective, and also when somebody gets onto your page and they see a house repaint, I, I was like, you know, I'm your potential customer right now. Right. And you're saying house repaint. And I'm thinking to myself already, what is that? What, you know, what does that necessarily entail? And what does that mean? Where have you just said house painting? It's like, yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking to get my house painted. You don't have to say, you know, house repaint, even because that's the terminology that they were using with inside of their own business and their industry. I'm like, but the average consumer, you know, they don't know that. And then as it goes like residential roofing or residential or whatever, not that many 
people, when you're just a consumer and you own a house, are searching for residential insert your business. And then another thing that I see is a lot of people really want to optimize for commercial. I want commercial work. I want commercial work. And the thing is, is the same search terms apply. So not that many people are searching for commercial cleaning company or commercial roofing company. They just are going to search for a roofing company and then find out when they land on your website, if you do commercial roofing. And you know, I don't think I've ever worked with a roofer who doesn't do commercial roofs ever. So I don't, I don't think there's necessarily a, a reason to, you know, like completely, you know, go all in on commercial versus residential. It's just roofing as a whole, you know, that's what you want to rank for. If a dentist needs their office clean, they're probably not looking for dental office cleaners near me. It's just cleaning companies because it's just like a <laughs> skill that people can, anybody can do it, right? Like you can clean, you can clean it. And maybe I'm wrong on this. Maybe, maybe, maybe you'd have like a roofing client who would completely disagree with me, but like from the land clearing or excavation side, it's like a builder doesn't call us and ask if we do commercial excavation. It's like, it's just do you do excavation? Do you do government excavation? It's like, do we just do excavation? If you got a government project, yes. If you're paying in US dollars or Bitcoin, we're showing up. Yeah, I totally agree. I have a couple other points that I wanna hit on um, early so people, they definitely get this um, through their heads um, from the conversion standpoint of things. So. The reality is a lot of people are going to land on your website and they're going to bounce off immediately. We have one client who's national and they use a software. I think it's hot jar. It might be something similar, but you can see user behavior patterns on your website. And it's really only useful when you're getting a lot of traffic. It's going to be hard to like have a lot of insight. If you don't get that much traffic, like make a statistically significant decision based off of it. But the data that he collected showed us that 80% of the people don't scroll past the hero section on a website. And what the hero section is, is first thing you see when you open a website where it's like, you know, Hey, this is the service we provide in this area. This is our value proposition. You know, you probably have a big image in the background or something of that nature. 80% of the people that came to his website did not scroll past that. So the point that I'm making here is you have to make it really frictionless for people to, to get your contact information and for them to give you their contact information. So what you should do is you should also optimize for mobile and desktop in this, because what's going to happen is you're going to get a decent amount of desktop traffic. And if all of your buttons just say call now, that's great. But if someone's on a PC, they're not going to be able to just call you. <laughs> you know, they're going to hit call now and it's going to try and like open a FaceTime browser or something like that. And they're just going to be confused and bounce off the page. So you should definitely at least have your phone number listed in front of their eyes that they can see right away. Um, or even in your call now, but instead of having call now there, you could just have the phone number with a phone symbol in that call to action button. And then, so that's typically on the left, on the left side of the page, you'll see the big heading one text where you'll include your keywords for SEO in there as well. You'll have your call to actions, maybe insert some social proof, like 120 plus five star Google reviews you'll add in there or a trust badge. Or if you have a special certification, you might want to show that there because it gives people trust and confidence in you. So even if they don't realize it, like a hundred percent satisfaction guarantee badge, if they see that subconsciously, they're already building trust when they see badges like that or a Google guaranteed badge, or, you know, I'm a verified partner or insured, whatever it is, include social proof there as well. Cause remember a lot of people aren't going to make it past this section. So you're trying to pr prove yourself. Um, you're trying to build trust and credibility as fast as possible. And then on the right side, I highly, highly, highly recommend to have a form there and that form name, email, phone, that's it. Literally nothing more. Every single incremental step. Well, there's, there's two, there's two buckets you can be in for this. So every incremental step that you have, if you're asking a lot of information, especially like a, someone's home address, not everybody's necessarily willing to give that up immediately, but every incremental step that you add in there, the less people you're going to get to submit the form. So some people look at that as a positive because the only leads that are going to come through are going to be very highly qualified because they're willing to give all that information, which is good. But my preference would be just name, email, phone, make it super simple. It's going to take them less than 30 seconds to input that information. Then you capture that. Then you can put your sales process into play and maybe they're unqualified or maybe they're a price shopper and they're not ready now, but you have that information and you can store that information in your CRM. You can retarget them in multiple different ways. You know, you could have an SMS campaign later, July 4th sale, email campaign towards them. If you're doing paid ads on Facebook, you could use that um, type of information to create a lookalike audience in Facebook ads as well. So there's a lot of value to just also just, just getting contact information too, because you know, this was already an interested prospect. They're, they're showing interest in your service by giving you their contact information. Therefore, not everyone's gonna buy, but the probability that they buy from you in the future 
is much higher than somebody who has never been to your website or ever heard of you before. So I think it's really beneficial to have that form in the hero section. And especially like if we were running Google ads for somebody, never ever do I not want to have that because the standard procedure is you have a contact form at the bottom of your website. What we see is that form in the hero section, because remember not many people are gonna scroll past that section has way more submissions than the contact form at the bottom of the screen or any other you know call to action throughout there that form is going to work really really well but th those are like major points i want to hit show your phone number make it visible so if someone's on desktop they can't call you from desktop but they can just type it into their phone and call you you know that's going to be really beneficial for you and then that form recommended make it as frictionless as possible so that was a ton of information and i love it and you hit the nail on the head in so many different areas let's break this down as a recap so let's define hero section what's the hero section yeah so it's just the the major portion of the website so basically right when you land on a website you don't even have to scroll at all you're already seeing the hero section so you'll see that navigation at the top typically and then that section where you're going to have a picture of say you and your team and you're going to say Andy, top rated pest control company of Fort Lauderdale or something like that will be your heading. You'll have a little subtext below it, adding more to your value proposition. But that heading there in that hero section, that big, bold text, that is also very, very important for SEO. So you want to optimize for your primary keywords and your location in that because this goes back to when I was talking about submitting the website in the Google search console, when they crawl over that, the heading one tag is going to be a primary indicator for what your content is about on that website because they need to understand the relevancy of the content that you're creating. Because if if you say you do pest control, but you're trying to win terms for plumbing, Google's just not gonna have any understanding of that at all. Their job is to show relevant searches to the users on their platform. Because if they didn't do that, people want, people just simply wouldn't use Google if they if they didn't feel like they could just go on Google and search for a plumbing company and find relevant searches, right? So they have to optimize for relevancy. They also have to optimize for trust, which is a different conversation um, as it relates to the SEO. It's basically everything, I'll keep this short, but everything that you do in SEO, the backlinks, the reviews, the content that you build, they're literally just to fill those two pillars of relevancy and trust. That's what it's all about because Google has to absolutely make sure that they're providing relevant searches to businesses that they know that they can trust to put in front of their audience. You know, because they can't have scam fake companies showing at the top of the search results. And then that also adds into if you rank at the top of Google, you are just simply more trusted too, because the users don't, they don't think about it on this sophisticated level, but they've just used Google enough that typically, you know, the top search results they've called many times or they've purchased from and things like that. And they just know that those are trustworthy sources that they can rely upon. So much information in that as well. So your heading one being that bold text that you see on your home page is super important because Google uses that to verify the relevancy of your site. So let's use a real world example, Andy. Let's take Denver Roofing Company, right? If you're gonna start a roofing company in Denver, what is your H1 gonna be right now from the SEO? Yeah, so probably the top search result or the, the, the most searched keywords um, by volume is probably literally gonna be roofing company. Probably, it's very broad, it's general. Remember, you're dealing with the general public here. Not everybody's super sophisticated about the searches that they make. So the primary search volume, let's say is roofing company, and you're trying to communicate to Google that you provide the service in a location. So you're gonna be the most trusted roofing company in Denver, you know? And then you can just think of like multiple variations of that, of however you wanna brand yourself, but like you're just definitely gonna make sure that you use the term roofing company and Denver in your heading one tag. However else you wanna organize it, whatever variation is absolutely fine, but you just wanna make sure you definitely have that in there. And let's take a step back real quick for anybody listening to this who is completely unfamiliar with the term SEO. The reason why he's saying you want to use roofing and Denver is because having an, a search engine optimized website means that your website is relevant to what users are searching for. So kind of going back to what Andy was saying before. So you're using roofing and you're using the term Denver. So the service you provide and the area you provide it. We're putting that in the H1. Now let's go to the subtext. Like every website or most professionally designed websites have this subtext below the H1. So what are you using there? Under your heading one tag there, where you're saying, you know, Denver Roofing Company, you're gonna include a value proposition, something with social proof that highlights why your company should be trusted, your experience, things of that nature. So a prime example of that would be, 
With over 50 years in the roofing industry, our team is ready to answer your questions and address your concerns. We know you will be absolutely thrilled with the finished product. And in there, if you offer multiple services that you really want people to know about without making it too lengthy, you know, you want only one or two sentences in this segment. You also want to include that in there because if you have a highly specialized service that you know people need, uh, you can also include that in there. If you're a plumber and there's one specific thing that you're really the best at and people typically come to you because not many other people can fulfill on that specific service, you're going to highlight that in there as well. So you've got the H1, you've got the uh, supporting copy yep. to sort of further state your value prop. And then you mentioned social proof. Can you break that down a little bit further? Yeah. So you want to highlight things, uh, you know, third party evidence, because with anything that you do in marketing, if you've ever gotten a referral, you understand how strong a third party signal is. So when somebody else had a great experience with you and they say, you know, Austin is, uh, he provided an exceptional service. He was super responsible. His team was so polite you realize that when that person comes to you, you almost just have to not mess up to close that deal at that point, right? Because somebody that they really trust is vouching for you and giving you trust. So you wanna highlight things of that nature. So if you have a lot of five-star Google reviews, you're gonna input that there. If you have a five-star rating on Facebook, if you are accredited by the BBB, uh, things of that nature. If you were highlighted on a local news network that everybody knows about, and as featured in section, as featured in the Denver Times. You know, I don't know if that's a news a news network there, but um, you, you can get the point because typically what you're communicating to the people is that if you're featured in something uh, of that nature, you're trusted at that point. So you're constantly throughout the entire page, not even just in the hero section, you're consistently trying to build trust. We've used Better Business Bureau. One thing we've used on ours is even just like a screenshot of your five-star rating on Google. Like I went and just took a screenshot of our average rating and then posted that there. And so uh, to be clear for our listeners here, you want to position that above the fold, correct? Like ideally where your customers can see that without having to scroll on the website. Absolutely correct. And you know, that's the term I was looking for when we're describing what the hero section is. It's everything above the fold. It's before a user scrolls. And like I mentioned, you know, from some data that we've seen, 80% of people don't leave that. So that's where you're going to really win the customer in that. So like everything that's the most engaging and the most important that you want to highlight is going to be above the fold. And I would assume the reason that that is, is because we're just so busy as Americans, right? It's like, everybody's busy. When you need something, you're searching for it. You click on it. If it looks professional, if they don't have to scroll, if they can input their contact information right there without having to scroll, then a lot of people will do that. So can you take us to that next piece of like, is there anything else before we get to the contact form that you want to cover in the hero section? No, I think, I think we hit it all on the head there. It, it's going to be, you know, including your keywords in that heading tag, your value proposition, in that sub copy below that, you're going to have your social proof and your call to actions where you highlight your phone number, you give them a secondary button, maybe to submit a form and maybe that'll take them to that bottom contact form section. But you'll typically be fine with just one call to action, which is a call now, because if you follow the standard that we're working off of, you don't have the form right beside it. So a call now that highlights your phone number, your social proof, um, any evidence is going to be absolutely perfect. And then the form, how are you structuring that? Or how do you like to see that structured? if somebody else is designing it. It's gonna be like a rectangle, right? And at the top of the form, right before your inputs, it's gonna be another like value add to the customer. So what am I gonna get out of me giving you my contact information? So this might be schedule your free roof inspection, get a free estimate today. Um, or you can even add some scarcity into it, which is a topic I wanna to talk about later for capturing lead information um, is, you know, you could have a countdown timer on there that's 48 hours left, get 20% off your first house washing for a pressure washer or something of that nature. You know, you can add in other variables like scarcity to engage people to give you their contact information. So it's really not going to be that big, not that loud or anything like that, but it's going to be another value proposition. You're going to ask for their name, email, phone number, a submit button. And even below that submit button, you could have the Google logo there with another five stars, you know, in case your left side of the screen with the heading text is getting a little bit too busy. You, know, you can add some other things into that form instead of it just having to be you know a blank box with three inputs um, that don't tell people what to do and something that you can also do here is that button that you click to submit be very intentional with them it's like click this button or you know 
submit and we will be in contact with you within the next 20 minutes or something like that. Let them know exactly what they're going to expect after they submit that in there. Cause I think that's an issue um, that I see a lot with, with any business. It's they sub you put in your contact information, you submit it. And then you're like, okay, I, I guess I'm done now. You know, I don't think I have anything else to do. I'll just wait and see if somebody calls me. You could even redirect them to another page where it says, Hey, our expert team is going to be in contact with you in the next 20 minutes. Please keep your phone by your side. You're going to receive a call here very soon. Something of that nature. You know, you're being intentional uh, with exactly what's going to happen. Because if you're not intentional with exactly what's going to happen, you might potentially lose that lead. So every single touch point that we have with the customer is important. And that being a major one, because you don't want to just get their contact information, then they never answer the phone and you never hear from them. You know, we're trying to make, we're trying to pull the most amount of juice out of every single lead that comes to your website. Striker Digital specializes in SEO services specifically for local service businesses. Bodie and Andy, the two co-founders, have helped me get Bear Claw Land Services to the number one search result on Google inside my state for my specific search term. If you want to learn more, visit strikerdigital.com. That's S-T-R-Y-K-E-R-Digital.com. What else do you want to coach us on for structuring your website next? Yeah, so we have a very specific structure that we like to follow. So it's going to be the hero section of all those details that we talked about, which it's good we spend a lot of time on that because it is, again uh the most important so as you scroll down through the page then once you break that fold we have two options we're either going to highlight the services that you offer directly right there right away or we can add additional social proof so in that social proof might be videos of work that you completed and testimonials with customers if you have that awesome and if you do have that you're probably absolutely crushing all of the biggest businesses that i know they have testimonials from customers they have videos of their work if they're a roofer maybe they have drone footage of the roofs and they're showing that in an edited video while also overlaying conversation with a testimonial from that customer so that's going to be perfect because every additional piece of social proof you have especially that third party social proof makes people more confident when they buy from you it's the same concept as when you go into amazon and if you're going to buy a product and there's two of the same product they're basically the same almost the same price and one has a thousand five-star reviews and the other has six you're typically always going to go with the one that has a thousand five-star reviews because you feel more confident that this product that you're purchasing is going to get you the outcome that you want. So if you have a lot of social proof, you need to make that loud and clear in front of them. So in that next section, you're going to have your testimonials. If you have them, if you do not, we're going to move right into your services section. So in web design, we call these cards and you know, they're like another rectangle and there'll be a button inside the rectangle where you can hit explore service, where you can go off to that page to learn more about that specific service, whether it's roof installation, roof repair, so whatever your service might be, insert um, any service in there. And in there, we're gonna include a picture of what that service is and hopefully a real picture from your real work with a one sentence description about it. And then just a call to action to take them to the page, to learn more information. And you're gonna highlight your services. And a major thing that I see is a lot of people want to highlight every single service that they possibly offer ever. You can't have 20 services highlight. It's going to take, it's going to take up a lot of your real estate there. The reality is if most people can assume that if you do roof installation, you probably do roof repair, right? You know, you, you probably, those services can pair together. You, you can have enough hope that people can come to a logical conclusion on their end that you're going to provide both of those services. So in this section, you have to highlight all of them, highlight the prime categories where you get what most of your business and what most of your business revenue is, what services they are, list them in there. Okay. So those are the cards. So how many services do you want to limit on the cards? Yeah. Typically we won't ever do more than six um, because you can have a, you can have a grid straight across. So if you're on a desktop and you're looking at the website, you can see three cards, you scroll, see another three, and then boom, you're onto the next section. And on mobile, that's still kind of long, right? You got to scroll through six of those. Um, so that's a lot of real estate that's taken up, but that's usually the maximum. If you can narrow it down to three, absolutely excellent. That is the most ideal scenario, but it's hard because you do need to showcase the work that you do. So, you know, all of this is on a case by case basis, right? You know, there's not one solution that fits all for every single business. So like when you're working with your web designer, or your web developer, you know, this is something that you're going to discuss that you're going to talk about is, and you're as the business owner, you should be relying on 
their experience from building, you know, hundreds of other home service business websites and a lot of people in your industry and knowing what works to recommend to you what to do. But then at both times, you have to strike that same balance again. As the web developer, us, when we're building a website for somebody, we have to understand we have to represent their brand the way they want their brand represented. And we will recommend as much as possible to strike that balance with them. But at the end of the day, you know, as the owner, you know, it is your brand and that has to be represented how you want it to be. Under a basic website, what would those cards be linked to? Yeah, so you would have a button like learn more, explore this service and things like that. So that'll link to what we call your primary service pages. So if you're clicking on a roof installation page, it's on the learn more under roof installation service card, it's gonna take you to a page specifically with that. And you're gonna show more evidence of your work. You're gonna highlight more social proof. You're gonna tell them about how the process works. You know, So step one, you contact us, we send somebody to your house to give you a free estimate. Step two, you know, we go through whatever step two is. Step three, you have the finished job. It's excellent. You're happy. You don't pay till you're satisfied type of deal, you know, because that's something we're also going to get to in the next section of the homepage, which if you want me to, I'll just dive into it right now. Please do. Yeah. So we always want to make, you know, I've, I've been hitting on this quite a few times. We always want to make it as frictionless as possible. So you want to make it look as frictionless as possible to work with you as well. So below that services section, we're going to typically have a how it works section and it's going to be three items wide. So it might just be a circle with a number one in it. And below that, it's going to be the first step in the process, which is typically get in contact. We'll come give you the estimate, yada, yada, something of that nature. And then maybe a pointing arrow to number two, which is step number two in your process, which will be independent to your business. But maybe at that point, it's, you know, you're already starting the work. We are, we will send our team on within two days to begin inspection and starting your service. Step three, after two weeks, the service will be completed and we will not leave until you're super satisfied, happy customer, ready to leave a five-star review. You know, I'm just spitballing like text that you can use here, but you can get an understanding because we're just communicating to them. They're like, oh, this isn't going to like, this isn't going to take too much of my time to do. You know, all I have to do is call them. They'll send somebody out. They'll get it all set up and then they'll take care of the rest is really what you're trying to communicate to them in this section. And then once you, once you work through that section, the next one below is going to be more of an about us. You know, what makes you different? What makes you stand out? Are you veteran owned? Are you a local family business? If yes, you know, you're going to have a picture of you and your team on there. Maybe some community events that you've participated in before. If you donate to a charity, highlighting things like that in an about us section, which I think is very, very important because we talked about this the first time I was on the podcast, but you know, if you're a home service business owner, you are coming to people's homes where their children are or where their valuables are. You know, it's, uh, it's not an easy task to just let somebody come into your home, right? You, so you, this just go enters in back into, uh, the trust component. So when you can see a smiling face of the team and the people that are actually going to be showing up or the person that you're going to call on the phone and talk to, you know, believe it or not, you can build trust over the internet. I mean, you're listening to this podcast right now. You probably not have never met us in person. You might've listened to Austin's last 20 episodes and you already trust him a lot just because you feel like, you know, him. you know, you saw a friendly smiling face and it's warm, it's welcoming, you know, and that's something that you should definitely highlight on your website. Yeah, definitely. I've seen a couple companies doing this, like putting a professional photo of their, it's GNM Outdoor Services. So Garrett and Marlena, brother and sister, I've had them both on the podcast. They have one of their sales reps, Michael, I think is his name, front and center on their website, exactly what you're talking about, like professional photo. He's smiling. I think he may even have like a thumbs up or something like that. But it's just like, this is part of the how it works process. And here's the person who is going to be giving you a call when you fill out the form. And I'm sure you can validate this, Andy, but when a customer takes the next step and fills out that form and Michael does call them, or in our case, like Josiah does call them, they're like, oh my gosh, this is actually real. Like they're doing exactly what they said they were going to do. And then it builds even more trust. I 100% agree. You, you basically set an expectation and then you meet that expectation. And therefore that is already communicating to them that you are trustworthy. You're going to show up on time. You're responsible. You're going to provide great quality work for, you know, whatever they're purchasing. For sure. What about the next section? Is there anything else after about us? Yeah. So again, we're going to highlight more reviews, um, in this section. So depending upon tools at your disposal, you can pull in live Google reviews onto your website, Google verified reviews. If not, you know, your web developer can just design the reviews for you there, um, and take real ones off of your Google business profile and paste that in there with the people's names and put a big Google logo on it. Right. Cause again, the more social proof we have from big trusted brands like that, 
the better. So we're gonna highlight reviews again. And then, you know, that's a pretty relatively simple section. And then below that, we're gonna have a frequently asked questions section. So this is for user experience for them because you as the owner, you can dictate this. You know what questions you get asked the most. So let's just handle the objections before they can even happen. You know, before we even have to get our salesperson on the team, let's just already have those questions answered there for them already done, you know, cause then we can just like bypass all objection handling and just get right into the meat of it and close the deal. So probably like three to six frequently asked questions. You know, you don't need a big 20 question list. Nobody's going to read all of that text. And you know, it's just another thing to note is that most people aren't going to come on your website and read 3000 words. You need to keep it very short and concise. And then below that section, another big contact form at the bottom and then your footer section and your homepage is done. You're set, you're good to go at that point. So that's everything in the homepage. You wanna do a quick recap of everything? Back to that hero section, which is above the fold before you scroll on the website. There's gonna be two segments to it on your left side. You're gonna have that heading one tag where you're gonna include your SEO keywords. There's gonna be a little bit of text below that. You're gonna have your value proposition, 50 years in business, licensed and insured, you know, something of that nature with your call to action button that highlights your phone number and allows them to actually click and make a call if they're on mobile and then additional social proof. So highlight, you know, 150 plus five-star Google reviews on that right side of the screen. You're going to have your form where you're going to tell them exactly what they're going to get. You're going to get a free estimate. You're going to get a free consultation. We're going to come to your house, enter your information, expect to hear from us in 20 minutes. And you're going to keep it very, very simple and concise name, email, phone number. That's it move on below that section. If you have video testimonials of your or videos of your work or video testimonials from customers, you're going to highlight those right away. If you don't, you're going to move right onto your services section where you're really going to try and narrow it down between three and six primary services that you offer have what we call a card there with an image of that service, the headline of, you know, what that service is called and a button for them to go to the page to learn more about that service below that section about us. You know, highlight really what you do. You're family owned, you're veteran owned, you've lived in this community for 20 years. You have a picture of you and your team. You know, if you're a solo owner operator, which maybe a lot of people are listening to this podcast, a picture of you and your family will, you know, will do excellent. That, that would be fantastic to have on there. Um, people love to see that kind of thing and they love to support those kind of people as well. And then below that section, um, we're going to have our frequently asked questions, the contact form and your footer just, you know, that's pretty standard across all websites there. So nothing super special to highlight there. Awesome. That was a great recap. That's the homepage. That was, that was literally like, I think you did that in like 90 seconds or less on the recap there. So we're going to take a snippet of that. We're going to put that at the beginning of the interview, uh, for like an, like an introduction, because that right there was the quick 90 second masterclass on what you need for your basic website. Is there anything else outside of that basic homepage that you would recommend for somebody who's just getting started or has already put a deposit down on uh, paying another designer to design their website? Yeah, I think, um, I think we covered it, but just highlighting it one more time is making sure you have your keywords that you want to rank for included throughout there. So the big one being your heading one tag. And then something we didn't talk about is heading two tags. So those sections below there, you're going to have more bold text that highlights what that section is about. So as soon as people see it, they know what information they're going to receive. And in those heading two texts, you can also include different variations of keywords that you want. So if you're targeting roof installation or roof repair, you know, I keep using roofing as an example, but you would plug those keywords throughout there naturally because Google's going to look at all of those heading tags. The heading one tag is going to be the biggest one, the most important, but you're also going to do everything right. You're not going to leave a single stone unturned. So you're going to include those keywords throughout there as well. If your H1 was Denver's most trusted roofing company, what would you use in like two, three, and four? Yeah, good question. So let's say we wanted to really highlight like our main focus that we want to win is on roof installations, right? So if you have that testimonial section, your heading two tag might be hear from our customers about recent roof installations completed in Denver, Colorado. That would be a perfect one, you know? So anything along those lines, it just has to pair with what the material in the section is going to be, but just finding a natural way to put that in there. And I think that's the, I think that's the perfect example for a heading two. Awesome. So if going back to like drone footage, like if you had a sweet edited video of your crew doing roofs and there was drone and, and then you had like a testimonial that, that was edited in to swipe across and it's a cool video. Do you put an H2 above that? 
section above above each video or above the section like if you just had one main video in a section well maybe this is another question for you too like do you put a if you have one main video like that do you put it on autoplay or do you embed autoplay. a youtube i like to embed from a product called wistia and what wistia allows you to do is your thumbnail so typically like if you go to a youtube channel you know that picture you see on a video that's what a thumbnail is and what Wistia will allow you to do is have a thumbnail that's already moving, like the first five seconds of the video. You can select at what time period it's in. So it'll grab people's attention really quick because they will see movement on the screen. And you know, that, that's my, my preferred way because I do like pattern interrupts for certain things that you're doing. You know, maybe you have a pop-up for a special offer, great pattern interrupt because you know you're gonna get their attention right away. But if you have one video, the way I would lay out that section is on the left side, you'd have your heading two tag, like we talked about, and then some text below it. And on the right side, you would have your video there. So I really like Wistia. I like v Vimeo too. Those are my preferred, but I really love Wistia for that feature of, you know, it's already moving, it's already engaging, so it draws attention very quickly. This episode is brought to you by Dialed In Bookkeeping. Ben and his team provide bookkeeping services, job costing reports, and accurate financial information for the home services industry. If you're looking to keep your books up to date, visit dialedinbookkeeping.com slash O-W-N-R-O-P-S. When you use this specific landing page, you'll get your first three months 50% off. What would that H2 be in that scenario? Let's stay on a roofing company. Let's say you got a sweet drone footage just showcasing your crew and like quality. And then maybe you got like a cut of a clip where it's like, a you know, your sales rep shaking a customer's hand, like all that good stuff, showcasing quality. What are you using for the copy in that H2 for that video section? Yeah, see, similar to with the testimonial. So see examples of a recent roof installation in West Palm Beach, Florida, something of that nature, you know, including your primary keyword. So it's probably going to be a secondary keyword. So we have roofing company. If we go back to that hero section, we're using like Denver's best roofing company. So then in that heading two for the next section, view a recent roof repair that we completed in Denver, Colorado. You know, you can make it sound a little bit better. I'm spitballing off the top of my head, but you know, you can get a little bit fancier with it there. So ultimately what I'm trying to extract out of you is just some examples like that. And that's a perfect one, Andy. So, so basically like for any listeners, just coming back to reiterating this point, like use your service as a keyword and then use your location and then talk about the section and make it relevant. Yep, absolutely correct. We have our homepage done and we have those service cards, right? And each of those are gonna be clickable and allow you to go to a page all about that service. And it's just gonna be the same thing replicated, but it's gonna be different because if the page you're clicking through is about roof repair, you're obviously gonna make sure that your heading one tag on that page in that hero section, again, is gonna to be top rated roof repair services in Denver, Colorado. And that's the same thing across all the primary service pages. And the content is gonna be, it's the same structure as the homepage and it's just regurgitated a little bit. You know, it's not the same content, but you're following the same setup and same structure across all of these additional pages as well. So it's not, not, over, not overly complex. I don't think a topic that we need to dive into like too deep on, it's just gonna make sure in that heading one tag, you're using that keyword and you're heading two tag, the keyword and the location. And then, you know, content about the service throughout the page, the content that actually answers questions about the service you provide, how you provide it, what it looks like, what the customer experience is going to look like for them when they're doing it. Um, if you want to be a person that reveals your prices prior, if you have a, a certain service that allows you to do that, you know, you can hint towards prices starting at $400. But when we're talking about high ticket services for roofing, obviously like, you know, that's gonna be independent to that specific case of what you're doing. So it's gonna to be tough to show prices, but you could do that as well. I used to be very against showing prices on the website. I'm more neutral about it now um, because this there's two buckets of thought for this. So the price, people will see it, and it'll scare them away and they'll go get on the phone, get on the phone with someone else and be in their sales process. But a lot of people are busy and they just wanna know the price up front. And those are typically gonna be, if they then call you and they already know the price, they're already really highly qualified leads. So you can view it from that aspect, like the price is there, you know exactly where you're gonna get, what you can expect to pay. If you call, I know you already know this and we can just, you know, cut through all the BS and get going. But you know, the other bucket is, if you don't show your prices on your website, you have the opportunity to put your sales process into play. They have to call and give you their contact information to get the pricing. If you had to choose one, which route would you go? I, I would go no pricing still. I've, I'm still biased towards that. Do you guys share your pricing on your agency? We do not. Um, I was actually, we're in conversation to do that probably. 
because it's, it'll be the same thing for us. Um, you know, we have plenty of case studies. We have plenty of testimonials. People know the quality of work that we provide. Here's the price. You know, if you can't afford the price right now, then, you know, save both parties time in that essence, right? But you guys are making a strategic dis decision based on where you're at in business, right? Like you probably don't want to be filling Bodie's pipeline with people who are like just starting out and don't have the budget to pay for this. Yeah, it all depends on, you know, this goes for any business. It really depends on the amount of lead flow that you have and where you want to invest your resources. Because say you're spent, like say you're a home service business, you spend $50,000 a month on ads and you have tons of leads coming through and you're doing in-person estimates and 50% of them are unqualified leads. You know, you're wasting a lot of time and resource. You're wasting your guy's time. You're wasting your company's resources to get them to do that. So when the price is just there, you know, the, the quantity of leads that come through will naturally go down, but the close rate technically should rise because the more leads, those leads will be more qualified. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a pick your poison. So like if you're a brand new business and you're small, I would, um, you know, just optimize to get as many leads as possible, no matter what, because maybe you're just willing to work for a cheaper price just to get the review, you know, just to get the testimonial and things like that. But if you're a bigger business with a lot of lead flow, it, it probably makes more sense in that aspect to, you know, show a price and qualify people better. Yeah. I agree with you a hundred percent. And then there will be certain scenarios where like with my business or with a roofing business, like high ticket services, you can't put your price in because every project is different. You may have a $20,000 project on one and a $200,000 project on the next one. And the reason being is because you got different pieces of equipment showing up and different amounts of people. And you may be doing a septic dig on one and a uh, land clearing job on the other. So, you know, I think the answer, the question's answered for a lot of people who are actually listening to this podcast who have the higher ticket services. I have a topic a little bit higher level. If you want to dive into something higher level that, you know, as internet marketing businesses, we do, but home services haven't adopted and they don't quite do this yet. But I think the ones that do will do really, really well. Interesting. You've caught my attention. And so let's dive into it. Okay. So if you guys have followed me on Twitter, or you followed Bodhi, something that we will do to generate leads is we'll put together a document. So basically I've done this a couple times. I've put at literally everything that I know about SEO into one document and I give it away absolutely for free. And so you're willing, you want that value, you want what I created and you're willing to give me your contact information to receive it. You know, it's no price. You just have to give me your name and your email. And then now I have your contact information. Now I can nurture you for a really, really long time. You're going to be on my email list and I have a valuable newsletter where I'm not selling you. I'm not pitching you. I'm just providing you free value over and over and over again until the point where you're like, wow, you know, these guys definitely know what they're doing here. It would just save me a lot of time and money if I just did it with them now, you know, it's really the angle. And then when you look at it from a home service business perspective, your lead magnet could simply be, you know, this is a spitball a little bit upcoming holiday discounts. Be the first to know, you know, name, email, phone number something of that nature, right? Or, you know, be the first to know about flash sales or 20% off your first house wash limited to the first five people. You're going to get contact information. You'll leave that up past five people so you can get that contact information, right? But the entire point of getting the contact information is one, we talked about like putting your sales process into play, but when you have this information, you can then retarget forever and ever and ever afterwards and, until somebody like potentially opts out of your funnel. So you can nurture them for a long time because Sometimes the case will be people are interested in if you offer a luxury service like the artificial turf installation, right? People are interested in their learning about it now, but like right now just might not be the time for them to do it. You know, their kids starting school, um, they're a little bit busy or they just had a different bill. They just finished paying off their car. They just bought a new car and they just don't have the money to do it right now, but they're interested and you have an interested prospect. So you can just nurture them over time with emails and SMS offers. And when, you know, it's a super cheap form of marketing to send an email, you know, you can go get like a convert kit or a beehive subscription for like, I don't know, $50 a month. And that's literally your maximum price. And then it's just your time to send them emails. And as a home service business, I don't think you have to send it that frequently, you know, once a month, stay top of mind, because I was a very good example of this is a work with a painting company and he retargets people like this. And he's his logic as to why he does this is, one time, a very long time ago, he had someone paint his house. And he's like, a year later, I could have never even told you who that company was that painted my house. I had, I have no idea. And therefore, 
you know, they're going to need that service or additional services that you offer again in the future. So you just need to stay top of mind. It's the same thing for pressure washing because pressure washing is a semi recurring business. A lot of people will pay to get their gutters clean and their house washed by you. And maybe they'll be expecting you to reach out to them next year to do it again. But if not, you know, you can just be in front of their eyes for super cheap on the lock screen of their phone with a text message and an email offering your services with a special offer. So having some sort of lead magnet like that to just capture people's information and get them into a nurturing funnel, I think is going to go a really, really long way. Because even if you don't win that customer in the moment, you don't win that customer, you could potentially make money from them 12, 18 months, 24 months down the road. And, you know, I think this is just what like really high level operators do is that they squeeze every single possible dollar that they can out of anywhere all the time, always, because that's how you get the best margins. If you paid $80 for that lead on Google ads, you know, make your money back maybe 18 months later, you know, it's hard to attribute it that way, but this is what the really top guys do. Like you had Sam on here and he's someone, he doesn't know it, how much like I learned from him just secondary reading his tweets and things like that. It's just that he's a guy who really, really knows his numbers well, and nothing slips through the cracks with him. Every single lead is definitely documented and definitely followed up and then followed up with a year later, two years later, and so on. And, you know, that's really how you're going to get the most bang for your buck on any marketing efforts that you do. You know, you can't just talk to a lead one time and then just, oh, I didn't get the job, move on, hope for the next one. You know, you have to be on the ball. You have to be on people. Sometimes they also just need a nudge to buy from you. <laughs> you know? Like for right now, like I need snow tires on my, on my vehicle. I know I need to go buy snow tires, but like, I have a million other things I need to do business-wise, but if somebody was calling me right now, like, Hey, we've got a special, you know, 10% off come in today on snow tires. Like I'm probably dropping everything else going, take my truck down. Cause this is a service I absolutely need. Same thing with a roof. It's like, people know they need to repair their roof. Same thing with like the fire mitigation stuff we do. It's like a lot of people know they need to do it, but like, if you're just sitting back, letting them come to you, that's a hard thing for a lot of people to do. But if you get back in front of them, if you keep it top of mind, it, one, it reminds them that they need to do it because some people have likely forgot that they need to replace their roof because they have 102 tasks that they need to do for work that day. Uh, yes, I agree with you on that with, with Sam, like incredible operator. And in that interview, I did take that away as well. Like the guy, when he gets a lead, it's like that's in his pipeline and he is following up with them until they absolutely tell him not to. Yep. Yeah, as you should. And you just also gave the perfect example of somebody that just needs a nudge. You know, you need the snow tires and it's like, it's on your list every day you wake up and you're like, ah, I need to do this thing. I need to do this thing. But it's one of those things. It's just kind of a big thing to do. It takes your time, you know, it takes your effort, it takes your money. Right. And, um, you just need somebody to push you over that edge a little bit to make you take action. And that's exactly what your goal is just to get people to take action. Yeah. I mean, think about it. Most of these service businesses, mine included, like we show up and we meet with the client on site as much as we like to think that we're doing a great job of delivering great service. Like sometimes we're, ju it's just annoying to meet with a contractor. Like you've got a million things to do as a consumer. It's like, okay, I know I need to do this. I booked the meeting with the contractor. And then the day the contractor's showing up, it's like, crap, I got a million other things I need to do. So it's like, it's not always the most joyful thing to do. Take time out of their day to meet with you either. But if they know the need, they need the service and you're, you're doubling up and you're following back up with the text and an email campaign, which I do have an interesting tool to share. And I just had a call with Brian Shankman. Have you met Brian yet? From Tooldesk? Yes. Yep, I did. I did Brian's podcast. Oh, you did? Yep. Uh, it was mo months, months back. But uh, yep, I'm sim I'm familiar with the tool that he built. So go check out Tooldesk. I literally came back across it last night because I'm using Jobber. And I think I told you right now we're taking on snowplow accounts. So I have all these customers that we've marketed to already who live in our geographic region that we've marketed on the, you know, either tree services, land clearing, dirt work, any of the excavation stuff. And we have this database of customers. I need to be in front of those people. Like, why would I not be offering snow plowing services to all those people? Um, I am running ads right now to get snow plow leads, but we need a quick way to market to those. And so what Brian has built is a, is a tool called tool desk. It integrates with Jobber. It's a one click add on, and then you can send texts and or emails to your customers, segment them by list. So you can say like, Hey, um, all the customers from 2024, send them an email like, Hey, all the jobs completed or all the invoices paid by customers. 
in 2024 so that you could segment them by customers who actually paid you for something. You could refollow back up. Hey, it's Bear Claw Land Services. Just wanted to let you know that we are offering snowplow services this year for anyone who needs it. Sign up now, get 10% off your first somebody. I'll give you, I don't know, some sort of Starbucks gift card or whatever. I'm just spitballing right now. But my point being is like having that ability to remarket quick out of Jobber is a pretty cool tool. So uh, I just signed up for it. It's like 99 bucks a month, but I'll pay $99 right now to get marketing material out to a customer quick. Another thing about that is, is that people that have already purchased from you in the past are much more probable to purchase from you again. <laughs> it's a big component of that. And if you guys go to tool, tooldesk.co, Brian's website is a perfect example of everything we were talking about. His big heading one tag, his value proposition, his call to action, his social proof, what problems the tool solves, AKA your services, if you're a home service business, it's a, it's a perfect example of a website. So if you made it to this point, check out that website. It's gonna be exactly what we talked about. Dude, uh, I was gonna bring that up earlier too, because I went through it last night. I was like, man, he has, and even on his onboarding process and in his signup flow, he's like strategically placed reviews at every friction point. And he's got like review sliders. You can definitely tell he comes from the tech world and has been involved in some sort of marketing function before uh, because it's very well designed for as early stage of a startup as they are. I have uh, one question for you about doing in-person estimates, which I think will also give value to all the listeners. So when somebody you know comes into your funnel, their lead and the salespeople contact them about showing up for an in-person estimate and giving a time, is there a point of friction where you're like, Hey, you just tell me what time and they tell you a time. You're like, Oh, I'm already booked out that time, you know, and then you just go back and forth figuring out the time. Or do you just send them like a Calendly type of deal where it's like, Hey, these are all the available times we have. This is how long it'll take at whatever your convenience is, schedule a time in. Do you do anything of that nature? What I like to do, like when I was in the sales role, my whole deal is call your leads as fast as possible. If you're not getting the response of, Oh my gosh, that was fast. Like you're too slow on the call. And you should be getting that response. Like if you call them immediately, and if you have the proper automation set up to where your leads are texted straight to your phone, you can click the number, you can call, hey, it's awesome from Bear Claw Land Services. I saw that you filled out the form on the website. How are you today? Holy crap, that was fast. If you're not getting that, too slow. My whole goal is like to get the customer on the phone. The reason being is because we deal with a lot of second homeowners who are traditionally more like baby boomers who are, are paying customers. So if I send them a Calendly link, like most of the people just aren't gonna know what it is or how it works if they're 60 or 70 years old. And so what I prefer to do is just get on the phone and on that phone call, um, I'm asking them about their project first, just clarifying questions. Please tell me about your project. I just get them to talk. And then after they tell me about that, I would just say, hey, so my process is before I give you an estimate, I just wanna see the project in person. What time works better for you, morning or afternoon? And then if they're like, well, I usually go to yoga class on more, you know, 9, 9 a.m. in the mornings, whatever, then I just go in the afternoon and I just have my schedule up and I book a time. It seems to go way quicker if you can just kind of control the conversation based off of your availability with the calendar, right? That's what I found. Now, if you can't get that, then things obviously change as well. In my opinion, it's like, don't overcomplicate it. Get the people on the phone, ask them what time works and then show up. And when people say like, oh, how soon could you get here? It's like, what about right now? Like, if you don't have stuff right now, go. Cause that's the most important thing in business is like, go get new customers, right? And people appreciate it if you're fast. Yep, yeah, I, I totally agree. I like how you, you're very intentional about everything. For example, like you're like morning or afternoon. So you already just segment it into two possible options. So then you already exclude a full segment. And it's like, okay, well, two to 7 p.m. What, what time in there works for you? And it's simple that way because I think a fear that I would have um, if I was doing an online booking like um, like a Calendly or something like that is you just really hit the nail on the head with the speed. Like we call them as fast as possible and I want to get to their house as fast as possible because they're most likely to buy in that time right there. Instead of if you give them one week until you're at their house, you know, a lot's going to change. They're not going to be as excited as they were in the moment when they saw your ad or they were on your website and they opted in. So I think just... It's just an overall business principle, right? It's just speed wins. Speed wins. It's just like, it's no different than sports. Speed definitely wins. Right now, like if you've paid money to put an ad in front of somebody and they've clicked on it, you have done a good job as a marketer to strike some sort of pain point. Right now, the customer is feeling that pain point. If you get on the phone with them, 
while that pain point is present, they are so much more likely to book a meeting with you and then sign an estimate that day. But if you wait until next week, you're going to get people who are like, and remind me who you're with and like, what, what ad did I fill out? Yeah. Cause even you've probably run into this still on Facebook ads, people will input their information and you will almost call them immediately. And they still don't even know who you are. I know someone didn't just fake put in your information, buddy. I know you, I know you put your information in to my land. Nobody's faking you in there. No. And I, like, I, I sit here and talk about the speed kill and like right now we're, we're working on you know, who's handling our sales process. So like right now I'm jumping in on the LSM stuff and with bear claw, like I'm just operating all day and simply sometimes just don't have the ability to call as soon as possible. So I got that response yesterday. It was like, and remind me, remind me who, who's calling. And that's when I know I've lost already at that point. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm going to come back to, and we're actively hiring a sales rep right now, but it's like, that has to be the standard. If we're going to spend money on advertising dollars, we have to have somebody right there to call that lead and look any listeners if you're in home service and you decide to spend money on on ads and you're not willing to call it's a complete waste of money like you might as well save your money uh, at least from the facebook ads perspective seo like i will say like invest in that all day long with striker and those guys but if you're going to pay on the facebook ad site you better be willing to call ASAP and have somebody who's dedicated to calling those leads. If you haven't signed up for the weekly newsletter yet, go to ownerops.com slash newsletter. That's O-W-N-R-O-P-S dot com slash newsletter. We summarize all of the learning lessons from the interviews with the guests on the podcast, and we distill those into short, actionable tips, tricks, tactics, and strategies that you can use to grow your own local service business. Sign up for the newsletter at ownerops.com. That's O-W-N-R-O-P-S dot com. What do you... Like whenever Striker takes over, like what's the juice that you provide to the website? So somebody has a basic website, you come in, you're like, okay, you have all this, you're ready to roll. What do you guys do from there? Yeah. So a lot of times, because in order to make people happy with our service, you know, people are investing into marketing because they want to make more money. It's, it's simple. The only reason that you pay for ads or you pay for SEO is simply because if you pay $1,500, you want to make $3,000, you know, that's the idea. So for us, when we come into a website, we will also conversion optimize it as well because that's how you're going to get the most return on your investment from our service so initially right away it's like we'll, we'll do a full audit you know you would be on an onboarding call with jerry your website will be up and we'll say hey these are the things that we want to change on your website are you okay with us making all of these changes here's why we want to make these changes based off of this information that we have from working with x amount of companies in this industry or just x amount of home service businesses we want to make these changes this is the reason that we need your heading one tag to include these keywords and say this location because this is how it's going to help you rank locally for that term so just initially like as it relates to the website as a whole we're going to conversion optimize it and SEO optimize it. And we'll walk you through every single step of the things that we're going to do. That way there's no big surprises. You're like, what happened to my website? You know, like you're going to be very aware of everything that's going to change and everything that's going to happen and what timeline that's going to happen on. But you know, those are, that's the big thing right away is, is because the secondary pages, like we, we talked about the primary service pages are super important to have for SEO and things like that. But we mentioned not many people leave the homepage. So we want to optimize to help you get as many leads as possible because you know, SEO isn't just, oh, look, hey, I got you ranking for these keywords. You know, you don't care about that. You don't care. You only care about how much money you make. And, you know, we're all in business. We all get that. That's just the reality. And, you know, so that's what we strive to do. Awesome. And then from there, like the services you provide, like what are you doing on a monthly basis to rank people? Yep. So there's three you can... Like I mentioned, everything is relevancy and trust for SEO. So everything that you do is for that. So on the website, we're going to be putting out consistent monthly content. And initially how that content looks is we're going to be creating location specific content. So every single service that you offer and every single location you offer that service in, you should have content about that on your website. SEO optimized correctly internally linked so it can get indexed because if we do not tell the algorithm about the services you provide and the location you provide them in, they're not just going to guess. Google's just going to guess, hey, I think this person has relevancy to this location, this service. So we have to explicitly tell them. So everything we've talked about has been on page today, right? And that's a major part of on page. Um, and then there's a lot of things that we do off of page. So one primary one um, that's relatively simple to understand is directory listings. So think of something like Yelp, you know, that's a business directory. So what we're going to do is we have a list of like 1500 of these that we're going to list you on over the course of time. 
And the reason that we do this is we're gonna make sure your business name, your address, your phone number, your business description, everything is consistent along those because all those business directories are listed on Google, therefore Google crawls all of them. And then when Google sees that your information is consistent across the board everywhere, it's signaling to them trust because most likely somebody that's just like scamming and just putting a website out there trying to get a couple people to call them or whatever is not going to be listed across all these directories with super accurate information, right? So that's one simple way that you can build trust. And then a really, really big component is backlinks. So what a backlink is, is basically a, there's an article on another website and it links to your website. So lucky for us, um, through a lot of hard work and time and wasted money, we have relationships with publishers where we control the content that goes on websites. So we write an article about your service and about the location link to your website from that article on a different website. And why this is so important is because backlinks act as a form of credibility. It goes back to that third party signal that we're talking about. So if enough credible websites are linking to your website, what it's telling Google is all these credible websites are vouching for the content on this website saying it's relevant and it's trustworthy. Therefore, naturally they want to rank you higher. And this is like, if you were trying to DIY SEO, this is where you're going to run into a complete roadblock. You're probably just not, you're just not going to be able to do this effectively for yourself because it's just incredibly difficult to find backlink sources. And if you don't have relationships with publishers like we do, you're either going to go into a website and you're going to pay like $500 per link, absolutely ridiculous price. You know, it's not going to, one link's not going to be worth $500 to you. And then your other option is to go on like a Fiverr or Upwork where people are selling like 1000 backlinks for like $30. And in that sense, you can think to yourself, you're probably going to get, <laughs> you're going to get what you pay for, you know, any service that you invest into, you're, you're going to get what you pay for, you know, you were not the cheapest and naturally you don't necessarily want the cheapest am i right you know you want to pay for a quality service because people that know that they can actually provide you a, a certain level of quality and service and results know their worth therefore they will charge you more money because of that you know that's just the way markets and work you know if you can solve a big problem for people and you can do it consistently and repeatedly you're going to be able to charge a higher price for it and you know it goes the same for your service everybody's services on here you know once you have so much trust and credibility and all of the social proof. Yeah, that, that chuck in a truck uh, will do $500 less for the job. But let me tell you about X, Y, Z example of things that we've covered and checks that we will do that we've come across this work before and know where these errors happen. You know, And that's the same thing for our business too, because we come into a lot of uh, websites where it's just like, holy smokes, buddy, you know, um, we're, we're in for a long ride here. Um, you did a lot of damage, you know? but yeah, to wrap it up, like those are the big things on page content and the off page directory listings and backlinks. There's other things in there that are more technical and like require more conversation to be had about them. But like, those are the high level things that you really need to know. Let's save it for next time. Let's dive deep in on, on that one on the next episode when you come, come back. But you guys are, I mean, I tell people this when I refer it people to you guys, it's like, you're offering a world-class service in my opinion, because, and I know you're big on this, creating the system. And I can tell even from working with you for 18 months now, it's like the strides you guys have made from like when I started with you, not that it wasn't good, but like now it's becoming great. It's becoming an exceptional product. And so in the beginning, like with anything, like I'm going to manage and I'm going to oversight. It's like all of us are small business owners. Like we really deeply care about our brand. Right. And so like, I'm going to micromanage everything. And I think in the beginning I was like super involved. And then finally I'm like, what am I doing? They know what they're doing and they know better than I do. So why wouldn't I just let them do it? And so like you guys are one of the services where I truly feel like, man, you guys got it. I get the notifications. I get my five articles and my five backlinks automatically sent to me via Slack. I read through those. And it's like, I think we made a couple specific target market corrections in the beginning because like fire mitigation is such a very specific service. But after we made those updates, it's like, man, you guys are cranking on it. And um, I will say that like, if you guys are hiring a marketing agency and in the beginning, like it, it's gonna require some work. Like if you're in a very specific market, like be willing to coach the marketing agency and, and tell them more about your market. But if a marketing agency cannot figure it out over time and like get it right, then it's probably time to move on. I will say that about Bodie and Andy. It's like, once we had those very specific conversations about fire mitigation, now it's cranking. It's been awesome to watch, especially with the automations that you guys have in place and the systems and the processes. Yeah, I think you and everybody else will understand this. You know, when it's your business and you put your face behind it, you know, that's your brand. And 
every single person that you work with, you care so deeply about the results and the quality of work that you provide them. And man, like, you know, sometimes in business, it just doesn't all go your way. And sometimes there's just going to be things that happen and it sucks, but you know, you're really invested into what you do and you're going to be really good at it when like you dream about that at night, that one conversation that you had where just things didn't go right or the one outcome that just wasn't what you wanted to deliver for the person. And I mean, it's super stressful, but if you want to be the best in the world at what you do, you know, that's part of the game. It's like you live it all the time, 24 seven. I think you guys are on the path. Like that's especially as it relates to home service business SEO. I truly believe you guys are the best in the game out there. And I think you're making the gap even wider every single day. So hats off to what y'all are doing. I look forward to seeing what you build over geez in just 12 months. It's going to be incredible. And then look back in five years, this thing's going to be a giant. Thanks for the kind words. Obviously I, you know, I'm always appreciative and thankful for you. Thanks for having me on. I look forward to once a quarter, we got to plan it. Uh, I'll be back because we talked about a lot, but I have a lot more that I can talk about still too. Before I let you go, you and I, we haven't even talked about this in probably like two months, but we talked about doing an event, home service business owners or people specifically who, who are engaged in this podcast, other operators. Uh, we talked about doing it with Christian Ruff. So let's stay on that. I want to pick that back up and get that scheduled for this, this next spring. So if any of you guys are listening to this, what Andy and I talked about is, yeah, basically just getting operators of home service businesses who are very serious about what they do on a weekend long event. I went to uh, one of Christian's events called Uncommon Elite and the dude is incredible at, at organizing ways to like bring people together uh, to work on challenging things. And so there were like mentally challenging things, there were physically challenging things, and then there was just great food. He hired a chef and, uh, there was time to just talk shop and get to know other people. So we talked about it last time we met up in Colorado. Let's make that happen in the spring. Yep. I agree wholeheartedly. I, ha I have to run now, but, uh, thank you so much for having me on. And, uh, it was a pleasure. Sounds good, Andy. Well, thanks again for being on the show. Uh, listeners, thanks for listening. If you don't mind to leave a quick five-star review, if you like this type of content, we'd sure appreciate it. Don't forget, work hard, do your best, never settle for less. We'll see you guys in the next episode.